multi-menu. So again, my hotel scenario. I can have different menus based on which um, outlet they go to. My fine dining restaurant has one menu look and menu items. My coffee, cafe, uh, coffee shop has another. My sports bar has another. So this is where you set up all those multiple menus and what their actual menus are going to start to look like. This is where you're starting to build it out and put it all together. So in this case, I've got my default menu, I've got my bar menu, my feature members, and my kiosk members. So let's just go into the bar menu for a second here. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm pointing to the template, the layout, which we're going to get into Form Designer, that the bar menu is going to look at. And again, if you remember, you associate these menus to the stations. So on my bar station, I would point it to the bar menu. The bar menu here is pointed to which bar template. So these are the choices in my current system of all the different order templates that I've got created. And I'm telling it to go look at this template called bar order and close. I also have a bar order that's a 10 by 24, et cetera. Any one of the number of the templates that we've created, this is where you point that towards. Okay, oops, didn't mean to do that. Sorry, guys. So just scrolling through, my default menu is pointing to this particular order form. And again, on my station one, I may be pointing station one to go look at my default menu. Bar menu, feature menu, we're just playing on that one. Kiosk menu is pointing to this one. Or maybe my kiosk menu, you know, needs to point to this one. Okay, so this is where you point to things that you've created. So menu setup. So this is where you actually start to put things on the screen and line things up. So a menu set up for our drop-down box through here. So multi-menu, by default, it's sorting alphabetically, gang. So it, by default, is showing you my bar menu. This is when we load a POS and we look on the bar screen. This is why the bar menus, beer, cocktail, shots, wine, etc., over here to the right-hand side with the actual items listed in the center. If I switch over to my default menu, and this is one that we've been looking at for the uh, quick order, you're going to notice the difference. This is the one where all of my order screens are down on the bottom instead of over to the right-hand side, and then all my items pop up in the center. Okay. So when you're working on these, you need to pick the proper menu that you want to look at when you start sorting things out and you're putting them on screen. And this, again, is when you're building this out, think in terms of maintenance, and this is also kind of when you're thinking in terms of the staff. How is it going to pop for the staff? How my menu flow make it as clean as possible because that reduces the number of errors that the servers might make on the system. All right, so special will allow me to sort the pages alphabetically or by products of all revenue centers. So again, you want to be cautious with this because again, when you're sorting these out, you might be positioning your buttons on the screen in a certain way, like I'm grouping all my salads together. I'm grouping all my soups together. If we're going to do this alphabetically, it's just going to, again, sort it alphabetically, which is what you can kind of see. Um, this one we actually did manually. So I got all my soups in the top row and I have all my salads in the bottom row. But if I choose to sort this page alphabetically, it's going to all get mixed together. So I tend to stay away from these buttons, quite honestly. Okay? Tagging we'll talk about uh, once we get into this, but it kind of basically allows you to pick multiple items and then say tag them and I want to sort them. I want to apply a certain set of conditions. So I can apply a certain price. I can apply a certain report category, print location. Um, that's not necessarily maybe something you might do because you kind of maybe did that when you were setting it all up back again product-wise. You added your soups to the appetizer page. You added your pastas to the pasta group or maybe they just went to the entree category. Um, this comes in handy a lot when it comes to color. I do this a lot when I'm like, I want all of, the, all of my appetizers to be a certain color. I want all of my, have certain text colors or certain text applications to them. I want them all to be italicized, all my salads to be italicized something along, along those lines. Okay, and then exit menu setup. So what you have here when you come in here, pages. So these are all of the order pages. And these are, your, these are order pages down here. This is what this is. It's all the different pages that you can sort of things by. So you're, again, grouping things in a way to make it easier for the servers to find. All my pastas and all my dinners in one uh, location. All my uh, grill items are one. All my wines are on a certain page. I can either click on the buttons down here to have them populate for me what the screen looks like and all the items that pop up, or I can click them over here. This is just a listing of all of the different ones that I've created. 
and then products. This is everything that's in my database. So once I select my page, then I can drop and drag the product that I want on that page. So say for instance I'm going to go to my dinner special screen and I'm going to go to my products listing and let's see, let's go and search. Here's my steak sandwich. I want my steak sandwich as a dinner special. All I'm going to do is hold down my left mouse button, pick the spot where I want it to appear and let go and that adds it to my menu screen. That's it. That's all there is to it. Or I can use my insert product button so I can hit T and hit insert product and then pick, pick the cell that I want to insert it at. So again, highlight, highlight cell, hit insert product or just click and drag. Your choice. Pulling it off would be just dragging it up to the trash can. That does not delete it off of the menu or out of the menu I should say, it just deletes it off of this order screen. And then to rearrange things, again, just hold down your right, left mouse button and just drop. Just drop and drag, basically. All you're doing is just dragging them around. So once you get all your items on screen, you may want to consider, you know, maybe I don't like the way that looks. Maybe I want to switch it over there. You know, what does it look like for the staff? Again, we're trying to minimize mistakes. Now, to visualize this, we have our lightning bolt. So if I click my lightning bolt, that is going to load it up for what it looks like on, this, on the front side. I can go to my dinner screen and I can see what this looks like for the staff. And you'll notice that it's also showing me items that I have 86 and also items I've put on countdown as well because it is really mimicking what it looks like for the servers on the front side. Alright, so this is where you can kind of test yourself out when you're building these. How does it look? Does it look right? Is it, is it a nice function to it, etc. So like for my old school burger. So now I can go ahead and let's say I have a look here, my grill item, old school burger. This will even bring up what the modifier windows are that are attached to that particular item. So my command, so anything that we've got set up for that, again, we're doing it by probably order group. Now again, or, or yeah, order group, or we might have done it by that item specific, maybe just for that specific one, we changed it up and we put commands in there. So to close out of that one, you just hit your X button. So this comes in handy when you're actually building out your menus. Okay. All right. So another thing that we can do through here is that we can edit a product. So maybe I want to go into my Miller Lite and I want to edit it. I want to look at it. I want to see something about the settings on it. Again, one of the ch biggest challenges you have when you're building these is sometimes you end up not realizing that you've got three items that all have the same name. Maybe you're trying to build some different modifiers and you didn't realize that you already had two of them in there. Um, so you've got three with the same name. Well, this way you can go in and you can look and make sure that you have the right one on screen. And for support, this is big because you'll get customers calling and saying, you know, I created this Miller Lite key and it's not showing up right and it's not showing the right color, et cetera. And you go and search it out and you find out that there's three of them out there. Um, so that's another thing that you want to kind of look for. Also, the other biggest challenge that I find sometimes with this is that in the product list, it goes by that first item name. You know, we'll, we have three different naming fields. It's looking here, it's sorted by its report name. So what's on the button can be different than what's on what you're searching by. So they may have called it, you know, the button may look like Miller Lite, but in the back end, they may have made the Miller, the Miller Lite name. This here could maybe say BT for bottle. So you realize you're not working with the right product. You know, so it, it doesn't function the way they expect it to function because they're not looking at the right product when they're, when they're in the system. So that's another thing to kind of watch for. Um, colors, etc. All right. Um, let's see what else can we do here. So let's talk about this tag thing for a second. So if I right click on any of these, I get another mini when men menu. And I also get another uh, tag button as well. So some of the things that we can do in our right click menu Edit the product, same as going to edit product up here. Show information. So if I, it's going to give me this like this little mini window. What are the prices that are set up for it? So it's another quick way as opposed to going into the edit product if I want. If I want to remove it, same as dragging it up to the trash can. Cut and copy. So maybe I have a whole line of these that I don't like where they are and I want to drop them down. So I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm just going to click. And then I'm going to right click and hit cut. I'm going to come down to the first one that I like, right click and insert. Oh. 
actually, oh, why did my copy didn't work? Oh, let's try that again. Uh-oh, that's going to get stupid on me. Cut. Hmm. Try, nope. All right, it's not working for me today. But I should be able to cut and copy. I should be able to take them all off, click where I want them to go, and then just drop them all in place as opposed to dropping and dragging each individually if that's what I chose to do. Okay, lock position. This is great when you're talking corporate menus. Maybe at the store level, they are allowed to add some things to themselves. Like they, maybe you set up a whole uh, real estate area. Like so, maybe this bottom line, this is their real estate. They can do whatever they want with it. But I don't want them mucking around with the organization and the sorting of anything else. It's a corporate item. And one of the reasons why you kind of do this is if you are managing with a with a head office. So the majority, the core menu is being managed by head office. But they do have some area that they, they have some flexibility, if you will, that they can add certain things. And that, again, if you kind of remember on Thursday, I went through um, record locking, which will allow some of that to have happen. I don't want them to touch any of this stuff. So this is where I'm going to use the, the tag piece for a second. So I'm going to hold down my control key. And I'm going to touch these three items, right click, and lock position. That is going to lock these items in their position. So anyone with a security level below 99 will not be able to move them. They can't put items on top of them, and they can't move them out of the way. And one of the reasons that we kind of like to do that is that I want to, again, if I'm going to let them have some real estate where they can add their own specials and they can do their own thing, I know as the head office person, the menu manager, that this bottom row, they get to do whatever they want to. So if I make changes to any of these other grid squares, I don't have to worry about there being another product in its place. So what I would do is I would lock down all of these grid squares so they can't put anything in those locations. And that gives me the ability to send down any kind of corporate menu changes that I want without any kind of challenges at the store. I just need to also know that I stay away from, say, my bottom row here. But that's what locking them down does which is actually really great, and again, when you're talking a corporate uh, entity. And again, you can go through, once you lock it, you can unlock it in the security level if you want to change the security level out. Maybe you'll say anybody with an owner level, um, they can go in and they can make changes. Um, so it's just, it's just a matter of how you set up security at the store level and who can do what. Okay? Um, another thing, a big thing with the tag, Let's do these three. Uh, one of the big things that I tend to do with this is color. So maybe I don't want those all to be that dark blue. Maybe for whatever reason I want them to be this teal color. And that allows me to go and do that. So you can click multiples and you can change their colors. And again, you can use your little lightning bolt so that you can see what it looks like. So this is also really good Like if you do use logos. So you can come into your screen and you can see how that looks with the logo. Make sure that you're not cramming things and that you're not blocking other things out. Okay, so that is everything through here. Okay, so again, depending on what you're doing, insert a page. I want to add a page. Where do I want to put the page? Click it, insert, or again, you can drop and drag. Okay, and again, it's based off of the different, if you're doing multi-menus, which really, don't get into multi-menus if you don't have to. I mean, again, it all depends. Some places, again, if you've got a drive through you might have, you're going to end up having a, probably a special menu for the drive-through, um, but a standard restaurant, you maybe you do do a special menu for the bartenders. Um, it all depends on what the business is. It really, it's all about the maintenance at that point. Okay, and I want to we cover everything. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go back again. I can't remember if we covered order pages or not on Thursday, so this might be a repeat. But this is when you create the actual order pages. So just like we go into product setup to create the products. This is where you create those order pages. And you basically give it a description, what the button's going to look like, uh, color text, if you're going to put a picture on it. Using the grid settings would mean follows what is in Form Designer, how you set it up in Form Designer, the whole layout. If you didn't want to do that, then you've got to start putting in your tops, your verticals, and your bottoms. And it's a lot more work to maintain it, but I mean, it's an option that you have. The other other thing that you do through here is you tell it whether or not it's an order page or a modifier page. That's important because when we get into form designer, we're going to be, there's different templates 
for an older page versus a modifier page. So this is where you're defining that as well. Okay, and again, that again goes back through menu setup. That's why the system knows, even though these are all together, it knows that the bar modifier page is a modifier page, as opposed to the kids menu is an actual order page, and affects the layout of inside of each. Thank you.